Welcome to Ramco TV. Today I'm going to talk to you about Omron Automation's latest solution, the NJ. This is going to be the perfect solution for your most challenging motion applications. Welcome, my name is Brad Vori. I'm the Automation Specialist for Motion and Inspection for Ramco. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Omron Automation's latest machine controller, the NJ. This is a one controller, one connection, and one software solution. So what does that exactly mean? With this single controller, I can do logic, motion, and networking all in one, and that's just standard. No add-on cards required. And that's just the hardware. From the software side, I can do programming, logic, motion, vision, safety, HMI, and set up the network without having to jump back and forth between different software suites. We'll get more in the software soon, but let's take a look at the hardware. On the left-hand side, I have my power supply. It's going to be rated between 100 to 240 volts AC, and it's also managed to shut down. Basically, this means it'll keep power into the processor until it can safely shut down when power is disconnected. Uh, I have a 1.66 gigahertz Atom processor, which packs high speeds for multiple axes of motion, battery backup for non-volatile memory, SD card slot for backup and restore, as well as a built-in Ethernet IP and EtherCAT ports. Now let's take a look at the different processors that are available. I have four different models. I can go from eight, 16, 32, and 64 axes of motion. There's also models with SQL, which is data collection from your NJ to a SQL server, and then a robot model. So Omron has a couple different versions of robots that are available that can be programmed right from the NJ. Now that we've talked about the processor features, let's see how the systems connect together. Looking at the system as a whole, I have two networks. I have my EtherCAT network, which is going to my switch, and then from my switch I can go to my HMI or any other third-party device. And then I have my EtherCAT network. My EtherCAT is basically a daisy chain from one device to the next. Here's my servos, and then from my servos I'm going to my NXIO. And now remember my NXIO is simply remote IO. And then from my NX I'm going over to my safety. This is basically further Annex I.O., but I have a safety CPU attached to it. My safety CPU is communicating with my input and output cards, and then I can attach standard I.O. onto that. The most powerful feature of this platform is the software. This is what makes it so easy to program and so powerful. Let's take a look at the software to see how easy it is. On the left-hand side is your MultiView Explorer. This section of the program allows you to pick different aspects of your software as far as EtherCAT settings, IO map, AM data settings, so on and so forth. And this usually remains static throughout your whole entire program so you can easily navigate back and forth. On your right hand side is your toolbox. This section allows you to add when you're in your ladder software different function blocks, contacts, coils, so on and so forth into your program. And to simply do that, just simply drag over. Now, when you're looking at a functional block and you're not sure what, what it is, especially if someone else wrote a program, highlight over that function block, hit your F1 key, and the help menu automatically pulls up. They've done a really good job showing the description of how it's used, as well as a sample code at the bottom of how each function block is used. And to delete any wrong, you simply hit delete. Another really key part of this program is the float capability. On your program, I can simply double click my program and move a window anywhere around my screen. This is really useful if I have a double screen and I want to look at the HMI programming and ladder logic at the same time. As I'm building along, you'll notice some of these red check marks. What the software is doing is doing an auto build. So it's, as you're producing your logic, it's automatically checking for errors and building at the same time. This is really nice for if you ever lose your software, software crashes, computer shuts down, 
It's automatically building and saving for you as you're going along. And as I keep talking about, there's one software, one solution. This allows me to use this single software, whether I want to program a vision sensor or an HMI. And simply do that, I can go up to my top menu, hit insert, and HMI. And now I can select whichever HMI I am using for this particular project. And a new window pop up showing the HMI software. And I can easily navigate back and forth between my HMI and my NJPLC. Now I'm going to show how to search an Ethercat network to see what drives or I.O. I have connected, as well as add an axis, and then we can see it run. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to go online with my controller. On the bottom, you should see a box that indicates whether we're online or not. And now I can go in and do a compare and merge actual network configuration. What this is doing is going out and searching for whatever drives I have connected and it's going to put them on the right hand side of the screen. If I want to merge those to my offline file, I can simply hit apply actual network configuration. Once the drives are added onto my network, now I can start adding axes onto my program. To do this, I can go to my motion control setup and axes set. Double click that, go offline, and choose add axes. From there, I can choose what axes I want to set. For this particular case, I'm going to choose servo axis. And then I'm going to choose node one. What this does is signs the servo axis to my node one drive. From there, I can choose to download the program. All right, now that the Axie configuration has been down with the controller, we can actually start dogging the axes around if we want to do some mechanical tests. What I can do is simply go to the controller, empty test run, and start. What this will do is overwrite any motion instructions in the program and allow you to dog each axis, do absolute positioning, relative positioning, and try out your homing sequence. The server drive is on, and now I can simply give it a velocity and acceleration. And now you can see my axis is moving and allows me to do any mechanical test that I need to perform. It makes a really quick way to test out your servos without having to build code first. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding of the functionality of the NJ. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. If you want to see this a live demo, please let me know and I'd be happy to drop it off. Thank you for attending and be safe out there.